B cup. Uh, yeah, I got an almanac from a year in the future. Used my time machine, DeLorean. Came back with the almanac. Read it. Saw this matchup. T one's gonna win. Okay, I'll go with DNC. I think they have the tools. We'll explain why, but we can hop into the game. You know. Okay. Okay. I'll Thanks just very go much. With the um, DNC. That was quick. I would wonder why, if you had a uh, time machine, you wouldn't just check the results rather than getting an element. But uh, anyway, it doesn't That's really matter. Results. Let's get into the game. Take it away. Be coming across for game number one of TNC versus T1. Thank you, Nomadia. Coming into game one, T1 against TNC. Crucial series for both these teams. Granted, that could be said a lot about all these series, but as we're coming down to the wire halfway through the season, they just become more crucial, of course, depending on where you are on the table. So, you know, you're alluding to it with uh, your pick for TNC. I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of faith here in a Phantom Assassin. At least that's just me. But, they have uh, a lot of burst damage against the Phantom Assassin pre-BKB. Uh, you have this Beastmaster, very annoying to play against. Uh, one of the strongest laners right now. Just feels really, really good. Love his itemization on KP already. Three branches, magic stick, will eat one branch and uh, yeah. Because Phantom Assassin will spam the dagger to be able to secure some of the last hits and for the harassment. I see Crystal Maiden Lane plus Phantom Assassin. I'm getting some flashbacks from the Virtus Pro squad where I'm not going to say they invented it, but uh, they kind of perfected it. Where Maiden, she starts with Crystal Nova, spams on two heroes, a dagger. You pretty much have a hundred move speed. So Shaker will take care of that. You know that lane is much closer to the tier one tower. Beastmaster will get uh, far more efficiently there. Matchup I'm looking forward to see is the mid matchup. Underlord, how he's gonna do against the Puck. Puck already gets the courier. Yeah, good move there by Armel. Were you expecting it to be Underlord Puck coming into that final pick or were you thinking maybe they would keep it as an, un an off lane Underlord and maybe throw the DP mid, or is it just the matchups are better this way for T1? Underlord on the off lane has a lot of bad matchups, like you have this Monkeys, you have Ursa, like Juggernaut plus one extra slow, just to, to be able to get on top of you. On the mid lane, he feels like a completely different hero, where like you don't get pressured as much, you get the levels. It's very hard to last hit into the Underlord. Like, you, like, look at the Firestorm AoE. It pretty much covers the whole area. Yeah. You don't have to really worry about anything else. You're just trying to get that Firestorm in, see us as best as you can. You can see just the feints back and forth between the two. You know, feinting that Firestorm at times and stopping those right clicks. Like, it, it's a battle of getting the CS. And, you know, you've got four denies for the Underlord already. And two there for the puck there really going head-to-head -head on it. If you watch that lane real closely, it's been pretty fun to watch with the two of them. You don't get pressured much as an Underlord. Every single time Firestorm is up, you're going to pop it. Uh, CS, he has a great attack animation on top of that. And look KP at his damage. Bottom, Fissure, oh, is it going to be enough distance? Stifling Dagger in the right click, 30 health. Just walking away, but that is pressure on the Beastmaster to push him out. And that keeps Jackie just... Freely farming for the moment. Always so, nice, and so, you know, you're talking about it, the slows. This type of lane, like you push the lane, you, you get level two faster than them. This is where the kill opportunity arises, and uh, you're kind of free to take it. Phantom Assassin also starting with the Orb of Venom, so even more slow, building into that Orb of Corrosion, which I really like. Just gives you that minus armor, the slow. Good thing about the item is Minus armor works on the tower. I think a lot of people are not aware of that. Also reason why it's so picked up, why it's picked up so often. We haven't really seen this Phantom Assassin at all between the two regions that we're covering in, you know, China and Southeast Asia. Is there a reason that this hero just has lost its pick rate or just has been ignored or the matchups really that bad? Like is Phantom Assassin still a good hero? Like, obviously, it's picked here. They have confidence in it, but overall, it, it's been pretty much ignored. No bans, no picks before this. Yeah, I think this is the first one we've seen so far in Southeast Asia and China. Yeah. Seen it a couple of times in other regions. Hero still viable, got nerfed in the previous patch, but, you know, Phantom Assassin's just going to do Phantom Assassin things. Are you a fan of the shard? 
in certain Thompson. situations, yeah, but it's too much gold investment. Like if you compare shard to let's say like a basher or BKB, whatever, like good item we're talking about, you still want to get the, like the standard items. Maybe we'll get to a point where we get to see fan of knives. I myself am a fan of fan of knives. Big fan of fan of knives. <laughs> it's a break mechanic, like break Beastmaster, break Earthshaker, Juggernaut's passive. Sure, maybe as a sixth, seventh item, possibly. I don't think you want to get it earlier. One of those old troll late game yeah, exactly. situations where it's like, oh, well, what do I buy now? You go towards that, uh, that shard. You've got yourself some extra gold. Gabby up towards top, trying to do what he can against Cuckoo and Zephyr, who... Have been the, have been putting the pressure on and yeah, forcing the healing ward out. Zephyr thinking about going into the trees. Gabby can only just watch from a distance. Finally moves up a little bit, but now they've got the stifling dagger on the KP. He's on the run. Frostbite, frostbite in. KP. Another dagger. dagger. This should be the first blood. And there it is for White Mon. Now Crystal Maiden has aura online. Like this is the dream. Crystal Maiden's level four, five minutes in, yeah. compared to like Earthshaker, who's level two, about to be level three. So, whole level difference. Carl decides to just TP out, back to the mid lane. Two K gold lead for T1 already. Like Juggernaut's getting pressure by the Dead Prophet. Underlord's doing extremely well in the mid lane. Like you can't stop Underlord from farming. Like, yeah, he's gonna drop that Firestorm. Ooh, Even if Fisher, he's pressured. Bottom. All right, Going bottom lane. Jackie, Armel's here, but Armel's only level five. Do they really expect to catch him? They do have haste, but the frostbite and the crystal nova. Armel ends up dead. Jackie's still on the run. Continuing to chase his KP. Now Whitemon under the tower into the trees. They want TP. Juking. Someone needs the TP. Somebody's got to come over. Jackie actually moves up forward. Is he? Thank okay. You. He possibly killed himself. Blink strike back to the range creep. Maybe, okay. yeah. Has some distance there. That is risky business and still has to deal with the boar coming out. Blink strike on cooldown. Now needs to keep running two more seconds. Jackie, he came back and put himself in such a bad situation. Fissure hits. Jackie, oh, low. dodges the axes. Like Beastmaster got the axes just so that they can get a kill, something that we usually don't see because it's a, a lot of mana consuming build. And now Crystal Maiden will use a salve on Phantom Assassin. Now they can start playing once again aggressively. They know Shaker has no mana. Yeah, they're so jumping KP, on this Beastmaster. TP, no mana. Already in trouble. You know, he used that mana, throwing those axes, and now well, he'll get the mana back, but that's because he's respawning in 20 seconds. This bottom lane is not going to say a disaster, but it's a rough one. So much slow. Ooh. Phantom Assassin just hit level 6. Yeah. Also, what was that rotation from Armel? Like, he was 5, needed 2 or 3 CS of the shared experience to get the, to level 6. I guess that was the plan, you know, push the wave, kill the creep wave, so I'm 6, and then we're gonna get the kills. First coil. Dream coil comes down. You've got three heroes up top. Do they even have the damage? Blade Fury, Icarus dive all out of the Death Prophet, who now starts to TP away. Just with a sliver of health. Survives. Oh man, now they're the tipping our mail. Second rotation did not not get anything out of that. And you could see these rotations are failing, and the net worths are growing for the Radiant side. Look at where the Underlord is compared to the Puff. A thousand gold ahead. They're, They're just, just going to go ahead. on Thames on bottom if they catch a glimpse of him. The slow is insane. The corrosion. Crystal Noah is level 3, plus a Stifling Dagger. This is really tough so far for... Uh... The side of TNC. Uh, Jackie's just having a free game. He's going into the Battle Fury. Ha he's here by himself, bottom, and any time anybody comes over, they usually pay for it. Meanwhile, Pit of Malice down, Illusory Orb over, picks up a haste. That'll help Armel leave if need be. So he'll be safe right now, but overall, it's just. Uh, you know, still going the way of T1, up 3K. And this is Phantom Assassin who hasn't moved, who hasn't really had the feeling of needing to join fights. Just can farm. 
Like that, that's exactly what you want in this situation. This is what you want to have from your Phantom Assassin. Secure the laning stage, finds the possessed mask, so some extra damage, extra life steal. It's one of the best items you can farm on your carries most of the time, on top of Royal Jelly. Like Morphling just loves this item. Uh, Thames should be in a lot of trouble, you know, if they decide to go on him. Crits are available, Fisher Swamp, already used. Stifling Dagger. Maiden is level six. Oh what? God. It's not even nine minutes. Dream Coil used on the Crystal Maiden and they'll bring over the Beastmaster who's not six. No Primal Roar. Still staying inside the Dream Coil, but the right clicks come out. Onto are they the gonna tip Armel Man again? survives for a second longer. The house get the kill on a KP, they look over at Armel. One hit. <gasps> I this expect goes horribly tips. from TNC. Tipping game from T1 is really on point here. Man, Armel can't catch a break. And now Every they're moving top. Time he makes a rotation, he's just dead after. This is a free tier one tower. No way you try to defend this. You've got no puck, you have no Beastmaster. T1 outplaying TNC right now. And Phantom Assassin top of the net worth. Almost has that battle fury already. I mean, I wouldn't call that a uh, whole battle in. fury, but it's over uh, 50%. yeah, it's, we it's, round up uh, in the US. Half. Chip vest for the dire, ocean heart for the radiant. Chip vest. My biggest concern is it doesn't give armor. Like it's a vest, it should Final give war. armor. And now they've got the sun ray, omni slash. Everything used just to kill Cuckoo. Like, yeah, that gets you a kill, and I think you're happy with that. But at the same time, now, what do you have to fight for the next few minutes? Good question. Armel, once again, needs to be active. It's one of those games where your mid laner knows the side lanes are not going well, his lane is not going well, so there's a lot of pressure on him to try to do stuff. And sometimes when you're pressured like that, you make mistakes. Yeah, it has been a high pressure situation. Jackie's still working with this lane, and now the stifling dagger. Oh, the crit's coming in. That's the RNG that we've been seeing, and well, Jackie just continues to farm. He gets a kill, he goes and he stays in his lane. Usually Phantom Assassin at this point would be in the jungle farming, because they're so far ahead and they have a good vision. Like they can allow Phantom Assassin to be on the bottom lane and still farm jungle and the lane at the same time. Man, 2k ahead of, of the jug. The, the Phantom Assassin's so far ahead of this Jug and doesn't even have Battle Fury yet. Jug's going into the Maelstrom, is almost one component into that. By the time he's got that Maelstrom, PA's got the Battle Fury. Just Jackie having a perfect game thus far, 4-0 in two. But uh, we'll see if TNC can bring this back. If their opportunities come, will they take advantage of it? They've got KP pushing bottom. With the Necro Book as well as the Boars, is that enough to get themselves a tower? They've also Maiden brought in is in jug. a really good position to use it. Oh, yeah. A, oh, yeah. Field. Immediately the Primal Roar, but they've got the Pit of Malice that lands out of the Jug as well as the Beastmaster. Now Frostbite on to Gabby. KP on the run. He's dead first. Already used the Blade Fury. There's three heroes there on the Dire side. Radiant, they don't need to pressure, they don't need to step too far. They've already got what they came for, and that's a kill on the Beastmaster as well as a defense on the Tier 1 tower. Keeping their towers alive is going to be crucial. You're playing into Juggernaut, some, sorry, Beastmaster, someone who wants to take your safe lane Tier 1 tower, control the jungle, but with the Tier 1 tower still standing there. Ooh, Echo, Echo. Fissure, and the kill quickly on a Cuckoo. A lot of these kills are coming out on the Death Prophet. All these ultis have been used on the DP so far. Not a big fan of this Falcon Blade on that Prophet. What you want to have on the offlane DP is a bit uh, more tanky build. It's a costly item, you know. Falcon yeah. Blade, it costs 1100. You know, you still get something from it, but it's a lot of investment. You're not a mid laner. Even like mid lane DPs don't get the item. It's more of a pub build, I would say. I would love to see like a Glimmer Cape possibly on the offlane dra Dead Prophet or just the straight up hood. And it doesn't feel like it gives you enough for 
a locked spot. And I say locked spot in, that's not building into anything else. Yeah, so he switches to Hood in, yeah. instead of going to Yule Scepter. Because if you go Witchblade and a Yule Scepter, it's a lot of like intelligence, but uh, not enough survivability. You're right. smart, but you know, one slap and all intelligence is gone. Yeah. Uh, that happens a lot. Just also, I would love to punch. see one point in silence coming out from the Dead Prophet. That valuable silence could make a whole lot of difference. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good silence at just level one. The casual point could really... I don't think it's going to... I mean, it'll make the fights easier. I don't think that's the difference in making or breaking the fight at the moment with T1 being ahead by so much. But at the same time, it stops TNC, I think, from really having a chance on uh, coming in and fighting him. There's the silence. Silence out of the puck. Exorcism used. Back away from the tower. To be honest, I expected it to have it a bit early. Like 3-1-3 build is fine. You're playing the offlane. You need that a bit of something else coming out from your offlane because you don't provide any stuns. Right. So still trying to take this tier one bottom. They cannot get through any of these towers on their on the radiant side. And TNC are stuck. And Zephyr... I love position 4 pangos. You get so much value from that Blink Dagger. Just Orb of Corrosion feels great on the hero. On top of the Blink Dagger, which allows you to land some good roars. Usually you kind of struggle against the Puck, against the Beastmaster. But the Blink Dagger, yeah, allows you to be more maneuverable in the fights. Maybe Excellent. get the first jump. He's getting really close to it. We see how much that disrupts when you go into the Rolling Thunder. Bounties will only make him closer. He's been farming this bottom lane by himself for a long time already. Battle Fury finished for Jackie going right into the Sanjin Yasha. Is this the item you want to see after the, the Battle Fury is finished? Okay, I, I don't mind. Like, um, against the Shaker, that extra status resistance, because they have a lot of stuns, uh, a right. lot of silences. Sure, why not? Like, just be a bit more tanky. Also decided to get the HP talent on level 10. So, yeah, be able to survive through initial burst because they have a lot of, like, spell damage. Ooh, did they spot KP coming into the trees with that ward? I didn't see. Coming bottom. He's on the run. They're navigating through. Swashbuckle, rolling thunder, primal roar. That stops him, but the frostbite's in as well as the freezing field. Rolling thunder will continue, and KP is dead with that. Carl's showed up and they can push for the Firestorm. White Bond's having a, such a great game on this yeah. CM. Level 9, 16 minutes in, doing so much work, providing vision. His wards were on point, the D wards as well. Just securing the lane for Phantom Assassin means quite a lot. Blink Dagger picked up for the Earth Shaker, so now they have an opportunity at Blink Echoes. We'll see if that ends up changing the complexion of this game so far it's all t1 and they're continuing to take out these towers without losing much of their own that top tier one finally goes but i mean everything around the map seems like it's it's that part in the lion king anything that the sun touches is ours a great um, quote a great movie the first movie i actually watched in a cinema so Always gonna be very important to me. No. Used to have all the Disney VHSs. For you used to? What happened? Well, you sold them? Yeah, when we sold my house, we uh, we gave up all the the VHSs. My brother had the whole like Disney collection, and uh, we had like Bambi, um, Hercules, uh, Lion King, everything. Just TP out. It's that easy. They have no abilities that go through magic community. For all you kids at home, a VHS. Do not throw them. Do not throw the old stuff. Uh, just if you have a basement, put it in a basement. Because <laughs> one day you might get a lot of value. Not just, you know, money value. But uh, you would love to see things that you owned when you yeah. were a kid. Yeah, I had to get rid of a lot of stuff. Now, if you want to get some money, you could do that crypto thing. I know BTC is up to 40k right now. I can't afford that, though. Doge is the new big thing, the hot seller on the market. So, smoke up from TNC. It seems like one of those, I think you should, don't, but you should, right? Uh, you know, invest, uh, I didn't say, don't uh, follow my advice. 
It's a mad world we live in, but uh, yeah, let's focus on the game. Philly dropped for D1. Roll. coming in, rolling thunder with the blink dagger. Yules up into the air. Fissure not going to keep him out. Freezing field dropped by White Mom for that kill on Febby. 6K lead still for T1. And Exorcism popped, looking like they want to go for Roche. Get back in here, dude. Buyback from Febby. Double damage Underlord. Let's check his damage. 330, not too bad. 18 minutes in. Roche turning back and forth. He's getting kited right now. He's not happy about it. Zephyr over on the high ground and Fissure Totem. Tim's in trouble, stifling dagger crits. And now the right clicks are in. They get the kill. The Omni Slash bounces. White Mon unfortunately tanks that. They've got the Dream Coil in. Look Tim the still right has down. Echo. Ooh. Jackie's dead too. Gabby moving forward. They'll look over for Cuckoo and Carl. Zephyr over to the side, has Swashbuckle ready to throw. If they want to chase and turn this around, they need to keep the pressure on. Otherwise, they're giving up Roche, but the Fissure didn't keep block. Cuckoo from getting on the high ground. Malice, now Blade Fury again, has that healing ward continuing to. Oh, they need bump to get this Roche. HP. Already used two buybacks. Healing ward running out. They're dropping low. One Firestorm they should. Have rolling Thunder with the Blink Dagger. They need to be oh, careful about going for this. This could be a disaster. Yeah, there's the Rolling Thunder. Echo Slam comes in. That's going to hit on a Cuckoo. They've got the Silence on a Carl. That keeps Underlord out from going for this. At the same time, Roche is low. Gabby and Armel are in. They'll take the Aegis. Gabby gets that one, and that is massive for TNC. A long, drawn out fight that becomes victorious for TNC with the prize being Roche. Cuckoo had Hood of Defiance ready, didn't even pop it at fight. Very interesting. So yeah, Roche attempt. If that was level two Death Prophet ulti, they would have been able to take it. Spirits go from eight to 16, a bit of a difference that could potentially, you know, mean, um, I'm gonna say a game, but this is a big win for TNC. They used two buybacks. Juggernaut managed to pick up Aegis. And that really helps Gabby just feel comfortable farming. Maybe they want to fight. Once Echo Slam is back off cooldown. As well as the Omni Slash. I mean, the Omni was used so early in that fight. Took out White Mon completely and holding that Echo that entire time until the opportunity came to throw it and they get a kill onto the Death Prophet with it. Just pretty, pretty impressive by TNC to be so patient in a fight like that. Two buybacks committed, you know, it, it's a lot of investment at this point, but yeah, they secured the Roche. Underlord has a full pipe, something that uh, we don't see that often, considering the cost change, it's a 1500 gold of an investment just to get the recipe. Fissure over on the back of Cuckoo, they've got the Underlord nearby, TNC thinking about jumping in. Over from the side, Bevy, ooh, now he's Dream Coil, that's down, Zephyr in trouble, Pit of Malice is in. But they're not locking up anybody. Now they find the jug. Egg. Fury, Primal Roar, Supernova. That goes off. They'll get the kill on the Cuckoo. They've taken out Zephyr. Two heroes gone. Zephyr buys back. Dark Rift away. No, he stops it. White Mon, Invis. But now the Sunray loses over with the Waiting Rift. They get the kill on the three. Again, they've got Zephyr thinking about going into the Rolling Thunder, having that Blink Dagger to disrupt the fight of TNC. But they are pretty healthy at the moment. KP gets caught by Jackie. Looks like TNC. They will give up on this fight, but they already got three, so they're happy with the exchange. One thing I noticed is D1 stopped tipping Armel, which means Armel is playing really well. Didn't die so far. Those two rotations kind of ended up uh, with a death, so he managed to recover. Yeah. Boots of Travel, Veil, ton of magical damage already coming out from both Phoenix, Earthshaker as well. They have Echo Slam ready and the Shaker getting closer to level 12. So I still feel they can try and go for a fight. Yeah, you know, Aegis is too. available. He's going for that shard. Probably the best shard in the game right now. Just feels like you're getting so much from it. Minus two seconds on the Fissure. You can walk on the Fissure and you can stun people. Sometimes I've seen players using Echo Slam just to stun on the Fissure without getting the Echo damage. We saw that a lot yesterday um, when we were covering the Chinese region in the one series we did. We saw a lot of echoes off off of players and just on the fissure. This SNY sounded like a great idea for T1, but without having a BKB, Phantom Assassin still needs to be very careful about joining fights or overextending right. because 
Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Still very vulnerable to any kind of magic damage burst, and they have done. Carl just waiting in the trees. Gabby pushing forward. He's got Firestorm and Pit of Malice to try and deter this push coming in from TNC. Cuckoo's here as well. The healing ward, though, that is, well, keeping Gabby healthy enough and keeping TNC's hopes of taking this tier two alive. Radiant so, um, looking to see, because TNC, they, they've got this Aegis and you can see or sense by the way that they're posturing, they want to fight with it. They do. Ages will be gone in 50. This Juggernaut is massive. I love the build on him. Manta style to be able to get rid of the silences, possibly disarm, a lot of slows. And then Maelstrom just feels uh, very good. You know, it's either Battle Fury or Maelstrom. Maelstrom uh, is like a cheaper Battle Fury. It also pierces through evasion against the Phantom Assassin, which I like. Right. So, so I got that Quicksilver amulet. Invisibility. You like that too? Uh, that, that neutral? When it first came out, I felt like I don't want to buy that. Not buy that. I don't want to carry that. Yeah. Because usually I'm a three, four, five player, and didn't get much value out of the item. But uh, it's a real good carry item. Let's say on a raid king, his skellies are always on cooldown. So he gets the move speed Radiant and the attack speed. So a lot of value for certain Radiant's heroes. So Jug just about completing this MKB, going Maelstrom Manta MKB. I like this build. Venom Assassin's going to have to be careful, despite the fact that Jackie sits top of the net worth was at 1.2k ahead of this Jug. Now only a couple hundred goals. And they, like you said, they stopped tipping RML. It's the sign that the game has changed because they definitely haven't used all their tips, that's for sure. And he also built a four staff. <laughs> Possibility to break the coil, get himself out of the trouble, save the teammates. Okay ish. Uh, not a big fan on the four staff on the mid laners because what you want to have from your mid lane is pretty much scaling. But uh, this, in this particular scenario, I think it could work. You know, like Yule Scepter could have been a better idea. Get rid of the roots. Get rid of the silences. Four right. Staff doesn't give you that. Well, he's also building into the Ags, so... Ags is fine. Like, yeah. you want to have Ags. Great setup for Echo. Juggernaut, Omni Slash. I see Ag and Scepter queued up on Jug, which means uh, that they're going to be like a mini Slash as well. We can call it a Quickie or Mini Slash. Swifter. Sure. Ooh, smoke. And Hit Malice is down. That's already broken. Not exactly what they want in that situation. They're trying to get a BKB on the Death Prophet. They already have one on the Phantom Assassin. Going Thunder. Thinking about going after Armel. Silence in the slow. 100 move Kuku speed. Has nothing doing right now. Blade Fury right on top. This Death Prophet in trouble. Dream Coil drop right on top of the Underwood as well as the Death Prophet. Supernova's in a great spot. But the fight is leading away from that egg. Going with the Echo Slam. Looking for the Dark Rift. Do they have the time? Yes, they do. But Cuckoo and Zephyr are already dead. But... They got the Phantom Assassin out, and that's the big point there. We've seen that today already, where one team has like 5 say, 6k gold lead, and the Edithme team is in full control of the game. They are yeah. the ones who are dictating the tempo, deciding where the team fights are gonna be. So this is the same thing that's happening here. Like uh, TNC, they were 5k gold down, and now they are the ones putting the pressure on the map and making aggressive moves. Next Roche may respawn in 50 seconds. I see a courier inside, it's Cuckoo's courier. So they want to be able to see when it respawns. TNC has a very, very good Roche taking lineup. This is really tough and it's all turned around off that first Roche. I think that was really the turning point where TNC felt like, you know, now they've got this Aegis and they've, they've turned the game. Most of the teams I think would not contest there, but TNC a lot of experience on that team. They're like, yeah, we're going in. You know, we're we'll fight around it. Uh, reset after a couple of spells were used, and then uh, take a fight. Uh, two buybacks committed. A lot of investment, but it paid off. 
Yeah, they got out in the positives, that's for sure. The investment, accrued interest, and in, well, now they lead the game by just a little bit of net worth. And it looks like Jug is about to surpass Jackie on the net worth. Net worth. And uh, I mean, this is pretty unbelievable how well they've done to just pull this game back. Primal Roar. That comes in, and they found White Mon freezing field, trying to survive. Plus 20 armor. Oh, the armor, and now a bit of malice, White Mon. He actually gets him. <laughs> like this is so insane. One v one. Oh, and win. Well, not, one not, versus not one exactly. was the start, but uh, then the other players came in and uh, kicked him while he was down. Radiance yeah, middle tower. Basically, uh, call an ambulance, but not for me. Fissure, silence, totem, locked down on a cuckoo, but not committed. Thinking about it, though. Cliff used by the dire side is T1 pressure the top tier two. They also dropped a ward uh, on the high ground of the Radiant base. Not sure if anybody caught that on T1, but there is that vision. And Zephyr ends up dead to Armel. He has the charge roll up. You know, being magic immune, coil with the Ags is eight seconds. So kind of tough to live. Also, that was a double damage on Puck. So something that also helps out quite a lot. Phantom Assassin did not go for Desolator this game. Like you get kind of a budget Deso from Orb of Corrosion. Right. She has level 20 talent, minus three armor, was holding the minus armor neutral item as well. Orb of Destruction. But now she just wants more status resistance, which I'm a big fan here against the Silences, against the Earthshaker combo. If he gets a good jump, like with Echo, you still have enough time to actually pop a BKB because status resistance should be around like 40%. It just checks. Wait, what does it say? 12%. It's not 12. Well, interesting. The number is not quite lining up. Like SNY gives extra 25. Yeah, so... I don't know. It's just bugged. Still in beta. Figure out. Totem as well. Right under the underwood of Carl, who is bottom. Rest of the team, though, they're smoked in top. A prize. If they could get a pickoff, Roche could be theirs. And we'll see. They've got the Basher finished on the Phantom Assassin. And they're looking to get that Abyssal. That would be potentially a game-changing item for the Phantom Assassin if he can get to it. But it looks like TNC, they're grouping up and ready to smoke. So they're going to move forward. TNC. Are they going to get... It looks like they're going to get here in time. They've got more than enough time. But Primal Roar, that's getting used onto Carl. Has buyback available and the Dark Rift. The They've used the Dream Quill onto the Phantom Assassin. Icarus Dive as well as the Supernova. But the egg right next to the Phantom Assassin. KP taking a lot of damage. So is Gabby. The egg's going to go off. Now the Omni Slash comes in. Big That's up for Jackie as well as Cuckoo. They get the triple kill. They'll take out both. And again, a fight near Roche. That goes well. Echo Slam used. Good four stab. Oh, is it oh. enough? Gabby low on health, but has that healing ward. It gets killed. Now Carl. We have four euros around him. White Mon thinking about TPing out. Oh, no. He stops Another the buyback. He's going to help Cuckoo. He buys back. Fissures walking across it, gets to the low ground, and again, focusing the attention on a White Mon. Roshan gets the kill. He'll take that one. Cuckoo comes in. White Mon buys back. They've got the silence onto the Earth Shaker. They look over as the Pit of Malice locks him off. Down goes Tim's. That's three buybacks. But uh, who's going to pick it up? There's no DP ulti. No I'm not sure for if, 45 seconds. yeah, if these buybacks are valuable for T1. Yeah, they stopped the Roche. If they can somehow manage to survive, get the Phantom Assassin online so she can pick up the Aegis, then it's worth it. If she doesn't get it, it's really not. But Gabby has another healing ward ready, so I expect them to go inside the pit again. Hawk. Courier all spot this 20 seconds till the Phantom Assassin is there. They've got the silence as well as the Crypt Swarm. Still working with that healing ward, getting up just about to full health. 
Spirit Siphon, Blade Fury forcing him away. Dream Coils out on the two. Rolling Thunder coming in. Roll up. Now, looking over back at Gabby, keeping him out of the fight. The Dream Coil is not going to get them the kills on a white mine as well as Cuckoo. Spirit Siphon, Armel in some trouble here with the Solar Crest. And now the Swift Slash bounces around. They don't have Omni Slash available. They'll get the kill on a white mine. They'll take out Cuckoo. Now two heroes without buyback. This is really falling apart for the side of T1. They do have the Phantom Assassin back into it. They look over at KP. The right click's coming in, but he's surviving. Firestorm down right on top of him. Stifling Dagger. That's thrown of a Gabby. Link Strike in. Gets the kill on a KP. Dark Rift out. Jackie, can you survive? They're trying to leave. They're thinking about going, and they do ditch. They bail. So let's see the healing ward. Available in three seconds. Once again, he didn't get the talent. Instead, went for the attack speed. But uh, just keeping the healing ward outside a bit. Pangolier. Uh, he he needs to go. Like you you suicide for this. Oh, he's going for it. Roll up, trying to survive, bouncing around, buying some time. Swashbuckle, swift slash. There's the kill on a Zephyr. White on Courier's dead too. So is Roche. Aegis is picked up by Gabby. Took Decision so making long. by TNC around the Roche pit is just much better than T1. Yeah. Like the understanding when they need to reset, get out, get back in, even after using a couple of buybacks. Teams was a bit hesitating with his buyback. Finally decides to use it. They secure a couple of kills. Phantom this? Assassin, after having so much free time, like you don't really feel she's delivering. No, and you're getting kills around the fight on like KP and sometimes on the on to Tim's but it, it's not those heroes that are crucial to getting you what you're there for and that's Roche now Gabby holding the Aegis also has Blade Fury shard upgrade which is insanely good movement speed and uh, you attack once per second dealing less damage but uh, still okay your procs work double damage bottled up you need to be careful about the swift slash with the DD I see Phantom Assassin trying to get Aghanim Scepter, lower the cooldown on the Blur, which is going to help out against the Swift Slash, against the Omni Slash. It's a 10 second ability, and the Juggernaut oh, might White struggle Mon. against that, but White Mon seems pretty dead on the bottom. Yeah, Waning Rift, Illusory Orb, eventually dead, now gone for 47 seconds. Oh, turn their attention towards bottom. All of a sudden, they have an 11k lead. No buybacks for anybody on T1. So if they were to lose a fight at this point, it looks like they'll just end up calling the game. Question is, though, these fights have been close. The rush, rushing wow, into the, the damage, but the four staff again. Great fissure from Tim's totem to keep them locked up. Now they're going through. Omni Slash bouncing around, going over to this Death Prophet. Zephyr, he's trying to survive, but he's gone for 65. The Supernova goes off. Three heroes alive for the side of T1. A lot dropped there by TNC, but they're still willing to go. They've got the Aegis on Jug. Oh, great coordination by TNC. Armel makes space for Cheese. Buck puts it in his inventory instantly, uses it, replenishes mana and the HP. Quick Slash still ready with the double damage going on. They need to be careful. Like, it's a ton of damage. They need the spell. Silence. Manta. All right, now starting to leave. Tier three still standing. Not awful, if you think about it, but still on the cusp of just blowing up. Keeping in their face. that PMA mentality. You have try. To, have to find something positive. You know, it's a 10k gold lead. They still have ages. Man, Armel, after struggling in the early stages, managed to recover so well. He's almost farmed as Phantom Assassin right now. Didn't die for, I believe, it's like 25 minutes. Yeah. So, 10k lead. Tim's fainting the fissure a few times. Now the totem continuing to lock up this Underward. And let's see. Can they go for this? They take the tier three and you can tell TNC again, every time they've had this Aegis, obviously it's just twice. Every time they've had it though, they've been wanting to make moves and, and stay postured forward, play the other side of the map. I want to see them making a, an aggressive move. There's still a minute and 30 seconds left on that Aegis. Healing Ward up again. Webler for TNC. That's gonna yeah, give that to Jug passed over straight to the jug. away. With the passive a very two. good item. So, Orb of Destruction, still keeping that in his backpack, you know, in case, let's say, you're going for the Throne Rush, you want to have that, but, uh, yeah, just the spin, 
Get some damage on the melee barracks. Wait for it to be available again. 50 seconds until Aegis is reclaimed. Juggle for a basher into the Pit of Malice. Gotta be careful. Rolling Thunder, that comes in. Exorcism used. Blame Fury, though. Gabby taking a lot of damage. Aegis has popped. He's away from his team. Tim's, though, has the Echo ready to go. So, 2-1 need to be very careful. And he'll use the Echo, but I'm not sure that lined up with the Fissure. And Omni Slash is bouncing around, and now they've got the Fissure onto a couple. They get the Cone to Cuckoo as well as the Totem. The Supernova goes off. Cuckoo, he's dead for 65. No buyback. I not sure the timing on it. I kind of lost track because I think the fissure was melting as he used the echo trying to keep those heroes locked up. Might have been hit by something. I was just uh, watching Gabby if he's going to be able to get out. Uh, so now he is in once again. Omni Slash. Oh, Mini Slash is ready. And That's just straight up dead. I mean, <laughs> so well, <laughs> White One, what did you think is going to happen? That extra armor is only in your ult, sir. Man, that is 40 seconds without the Crystal Maiden, but TNC, they back off. Right now, T1 live another day. At least for now. Things are definitely getting dangerous for them, though. Regen rune for Armel. He'll pick that up. 4-2 and 18 on this puck. And top lane, now Fisher coming in, Dream Coil used. Gabby dropping so low. Gabby on the run, Zephyr Swashbuckle, the healing more to the Manta. Now the Swift Slash takes out Zephyr. Jackie looking for a way to just kill off Gabby, but he just doesn't have the opportunity. Carl goes down to Armel, and Jug survives it all. I think he actually dodged the Swashbuckle there. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, maybe he didn't hit, but also healing ward. Perfect timing, you know, get them a bit of a extra HP. They have so much sustain, like Healing Ward, Phoenix, Sunray, to keep him alive. Phoenix also finished the E on Disc, so he's uh, pretty safe against any kind of a jump. Uh, e on Disc is fine, but, uh, you know, if you're in a range of Dagger from Phantom Assassin, it's just my proc your E on Disc with uh, one spell, which is something that you do not want to see. So Phantom Assassin queues up Divine Rapier. I, I love that. You're in a situation where, you know, it's not going well for you. You need to try to think how to come back into the game. At TNC right now, I don't think they, like, need to force too much. They should check if there's buyback available on the Underlord, uh, which is not. 600 gold away from it. Man, attack speed on Juggernaut is insane with that leveler. Yeah. He's got Omni Slash available as well as a Swift Slash. He'll go to the Swift Slash to start. They'll get the Kuna Cuckoo. There's the Rolling Thunder. Sunray right on top of the Jug, keeping him alive. The Sustain, you talked about it, and it's really helping keep this Jug healthy. But there's the Stifling Dagger as well as the Dream Coil coming down. Do they have the damage to get the Kona Gabby? They do. They take another Jug with the BKB Beam Pop here by the Phantom Assassin. They got themselves one. Go to the Freezing Field, but Armel, Stifling Dagger, phase shifted, and, well, they lose Jug. He doesn't have buyback. This is why I said they need to just uh, poke, see what's going to happen. Because Juggernaut still dies. There's a ton of minus armor coming out from Phantom Assassin, Talent, Orb of Corrosion, uh, Pangolier, Orb of Destruction. That's like AoE minus armor combined with the Swashbuckle. Let's see when the Roche is going to spawn. If it's a long spawn, it benefits TNC much more. If it's a quick one, T1 might have an opportunity to set up at the pit. Timeless Relic for Earthshaker or Penta Timeless Edge Relic for too. Puck. I think uh, you give it to Puck if you don't find the better item. So, you know, that uh, Dream Coil is going to last for ages. Silences. Also, Lincoln Sphere finished on Armel. Armel just having a perfect game after a bad start. Yeah, and that is Penta Edge Sword for the Phantom Assassin. A long Roche. That is not going to be available for T1 to uh, take if... It had come up quickly, and TNC were down the jug. They're down the jug for another 23 seconds. 4,400 gold for the Phantom Assassin with the Divine Rapier trying to make something happen to get gold from nothing, trying to become an alchemist in a way, trying to make gold from nothing. You need equivalent exchange. So we'll see. Maybe Divine Rapier. Now you sell Orb of Corrosion. You buy that Sacred Relic and just be ready for the next fight. They don't know when the Roche is going to spawn. They're not as smart as us. And all the guys observing from the in-game, we have the technology, they don't. 
The six billion dollar man. We have the technology. We can rebuild him. TNC. Rebuilding after a deficit and working on putting it all together to put a staple on this game. And well, they're up 15k. You're a thousand gold away from the Divine Rapier for Jackie. He's trying to farm top while TNC are wrapping good from smoke. behind. Nice wrap around. Carl, spider legs, now silenced. He spotted them. Surprised he didn't go for a coil there. Underlord is the one who can bail them out with the Juggernaut. I still feel they have enough damage to take down one hero. Could sell the Orb of Corrosion, get closer to the Divine Rapier. Radiance Buy it out and maybe try to fight attack. right there. It's high risk, but you need to be high risk at this point. Now pushing in over mid is Gabby. So, the Uber is home, but not everybody came with it. Whitemon takes the outpost, blink. Oh, and Jackie might get caught. He should be very careful. The Wine Rapier is done, just keep his back to base. Like this one could have backfired so easily. He survives that. I can't believe it. If, if he dies there, that's just, you know, game throwing. The game ends, you lose a Rapier, you don't have a buyback without BA, there's not enough damage. Roche will respawn in two seconds. There's a courier from Crystal Maiden. Not Spoke healthy, but uh, doing the job, scouting things out. The battle of the couriers inside the pit. Now they know where Tim's is. And silence. I think stopping that stifling dagger on Tim's. They need to be very careful. Again, they're fighting into everything. They'll go to the Rolling Thunder with the Blink. But the Blink Fury already started. A couple shots up. It's a Blink. Gabby getting low. Can he survive? Pit of Malice is there. There's he the gets Swiss the Flash. I believe the Omni is used. And they get the kill on Arnold. They end up losing Cuckoo. The Swash Bubble comes in. They get the kill on the Gabby. They're not going to have a jump for 99 seconds. KP over to the side. He needs to leave. Somehow, T1, they get Gabby, and well, without a jug, this is feeling like, well, T and C have to concede a Roche. It's not somehow, it's Divine Rapier combined with Coup de Gras. There's no buybacks on two cores, so, I mean, there's buyback available on Puck, but Jug doesn't have it, so I don't think you commit here. So that's Cheese, Aegis, and Refresher. Obviously, they can see them doing it. They've got Earthshaker's Courier in. Evacuate from the pit for a second. 60 seconds without the jug. They need to get this done. This is a big moment for T1 to try and get back into this game. And TNC are not even coming over. They're not going to risk any lives. They're letting T1 have it. That's Refresher. That's Aegis. All with the cheese ready to go for T1. Now you have a Divine Rapier. And it's not as scary to hold with an Aegis as well. Yeah, they only lost melee barracks on the bottom. Well, let's see those crits, 2.6k, not too bad, not too bad. Could be more. I've seen better. I've seen around 6,000, I believe, in one of the secret games. Venom Assassin back to the Ags, potentially. Yeah, that Ags that. with the Divine Rapier, refreshing cooldown on a Phantom Strike. That's just brutal. Oy. So we'll see what Phantom Assassin can get done in terms of getting to that Ags. Do you go Ags and replace something, or are you going to buy out an Ags Blessing? I don't think you really have the space for it. If you can farm the gold, sure. If you can't, I still would prefer holding Aghanim's Scepter and removing the Power Threads, because you get a kill, your abilities refresh. With the Phantom Strike cast range, you are able to maneuver in and out of the fights anyway. So you're not that boots dependent as a hero. Well, deforestation from Zephyr with the Rolling Thunder trying to spot someone. Buys three components of the Ags and will have that I, sent I would out. love to see Vlad's being built just to have that uh, lifesteal for Phantom Assassin. It's uh, kind of a lot considering how much damage she deals. Hmm. So either a Pangolier or if Crystal Maiden can somehow manage to actually farm it, Tinker Ward place. I don't think TNC wants to defend this tier two tower bottom anyway. Ooh, so yeah, bought the recipe on the Ags, blessing, and now needs a thousand more gold. They're gonna TP back. TNC playing top. Phoenix also going for an Ags, but that is a long ways out. 
three components still needed on that. Okay, coin up an entire creep wave in one shot, sure. You do you. And 6K lead for TNC. And that it, doesn't matter. At this point, yeah, the uh, net worth is just a number. Very irrelevant at this point because Phantom Assassin, one, one crit, one hit. See you later. One hero dead, pretty much. One E on disc, done. On the Phoenix, is there anyone else going for the E on disc? No, not at this point. It's like, uh, whose line is it anyway, where the points don't matter, except here it's where the net worth don't matter. Scenes from a hat, things you can do with the Divine Rapier. And that's one shot a lot of these heroes on TNC. So Agatim's upgraded on Phantom Assassin, instant cast time on a blur, plus ability to refresh your abilities top tower is under attack. after you get a kill. And disc for Cuckoo, who's been struggling in a lot of these fights. He's been the first casualty in a lot of them. You can see Phoenix really wants to get that Ags. They have not really been able to pop the egg. Yeah, Ags have been really nicely placed. Oh, Jump. Abyssal, but with the Lotus, that bounces back to Gabby, scaring TNC enough where they need to leave. D1 needs to make stuff happen. They still have a minute and 30 seconds. This is where they feel comfortable fighting into enemy team with the Divine Rapier. And that Aegis still in the hands. Ooh, Wind Waker being built for the Underworld. I love the that item. Here. Like, this item is very expensive. But we've seen yesterday in Chinese region, like, Wind Waker being built. We've seen Shard on Batrider saving yeah. and pretty much turning the game around. For those abilities. who don't know, Shard on Batrider allows you to target allies, 20 second cooldown, and also gives 80% damage reduction on the allies that you used it on. Now, the, the least important part of that one. Yeah, like, I, I saved it for the last part. <laughs> Oh, no damage, you say? Sure. TNC setting up here nearby. Rolling Thunder, that started as well as the Exorcism. They're going to want to fight into this, but they're kind of far behind. They need to close the gap. Blade Fury used by Gabby. Dream Coil is out. That's going to stop this Pangolier in his tracks. They use Exorcism. They use Rolling Thunder. And they don't get anything yet. And just popped. And now the Abyssal Blade to follow it up. The Lotus Orb, the Silence is there. And they'll get the kill on to Febby, taking out this Phoenix, making sure that they can slow down that Ags on the bird. And, well, Radiant's they've also got no Phoenix for 120 attack. seconds. Aegis okay. is reclaimed. So Phantom Assassin holding on to a cheese right now. Where's that refresher? They had a refresher as well. Okay, Pango's still holding it. They can give that to that Prophet, possibly. Have another Exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> we were just observing this one super creep that has killed Arax and is now going for a shrine that Dyer's used to be. Oh, he's going ham. Let's go. I think he's got it. Predictions in the chat? Yes, no. One for yes, two for no. How many hits does he need? He needs like 20 hits. How many hits does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? And I think it's going to be about six more. Two, three, four. He no. got it. All right, he's got it. Could get another one. <laughs> All right, the tower is there. Enough of this. Surprised they did <laughs> not use Underlord Ulti to gank that creep. He caused a lot of trouble. <laughs> he took two buildings. Just letting a super melee creep. How lazy do is like that? that? You name a building just a building in Dota? Yeah. Just build it. Pretty sure we could think of something better, right? Like in Warcraft 3, it was called what? Ziggurat okay. from the Undying. Moonwell for the Sentinel. You could also also known as Starcraft Radiant. Route. Pylons. Sure, whatever. That's copyrighted, but you know, we can think of something else. Bleep that out. We're on delay. Hopefully. I didn't say that. So, we're getting to the point where. It always feels like, yeah, it's 10 minutes in between 50 and 60, but you start thinking, tier fives. Games kind of slow down in between these points. You love those I love tier five it. items. Well, like every single lot. time the game is around 50 <laughs> yeah, minutes, you're I'll like, oh that. yeah, tier five items coming out soon. That's 10 minutes of Dota still to be played. We always get there though. Another Divine Rapier could up on P8. Love that. Crystal Maiden, Blink Dagger, 
Someone, please buy Vlad's. Old man Vladimir would uh, really appreciate that. Isn't his castle nearby? Vlad's That's castle? Vlad Tepes. I'm not sure if whose full name is Vladimir. Brand Castle, Vlad Tepes, yeah. Oh, Armel in silence onto the Pangolier. Now up into the air, they've got the Fissure that hits onto the Crystal Maiden as well as the Death Prophet. They get the kill on Armel very quickly. The damage coming out from Jackie really fell in silence onto Gabby. Pops the Manta now. Going with the Blade Fear trying to get away with the Exorcism. Pop by the Death Prophet. They'll go after both Febby as well as Gabby. Febby trying to TP away in the tree. Good Fissure. And, oh, they got him. They'll stop the TP. The Fissure not enough. Kid Alice is there. And down goes Jack. Or down goes Febby to Jackie, who's on a killing spree. He was in those trees. I thought he was away. Thought he was going to get out. Well played. Man, this Divine Rapier Games, Phantom Assassin has enough money to buy another one. Do you get it? Do you sure, get it? why do you not? Get it and hold it, or do you get it? You can put it back in the backpack. And, and, yeah. You know, just lock it. Possibly swap the power threads with just a sacred relic and unlock it in a fight. After what? you get like one kill, possibly. Yeah. But if you get the Aegis, unleash the Kraken. Full power, all in. Unleash the Kraken. Could be what we see from Jackie next. And this is now a net worth lead for T1. TNC, they certainly had their opportunities, and we saw Armel, who dies in that fight. He, it, he died in like two shots. Yeah, Gabby also. Like, he's sitting at 24 armor. Like, his armor's not that high, to be honest. Hmm. No Deso, though. Because he does not have any, like, edgy items. Right. There's no butterfly. Going into Swift Blink, which is okay. Has Nullifier to proc those Eon Discs. Possibly Ghost Scepters. Glimmer Caves. Like, Nullifier is just... Uh, a great item. Also, it's going to be very good against the Wind Waker if, uh, if he can get that on the target. But man, Wind Waker, a big fan. This item has a lot of value. You can use it on your allies. You can't move your allies as you can move yourself, but uh, still just casting a Cyclone, sometimes those two and a half seconds could make a lot of difference. We've seen it make a lot of difference in situations like this. The Astro LGD game specifically. I mean, that was Wind Waker Party. So now again, T1 come through mid. Fissure hits on the Cuckoo. Illusory Orb jaunts to it. Waning Rift from the phase shift into a blink out. Armel thinking about it. He had the team nearby. Scouts a little bit. Roche in a couple seconds. That's going to be Aegis. Cheese, Refresher Shard, Ag's Blessing, the whole kit, and Caboodle. Ready to go for whoever can claim. Bit of malice lasts for so long after Underlord hits level 25, the talent. It's just extra 0 0.65 seconds. Uh, Roche not going best. down very quickly. Yeah, not as slow anymore. Dream Coil is out. Primal War is going to be used on Cuckoo. They're going to look over as they've got the Freezing Field coming down from White on the damage on to Good Ar fish are actually blocking Fisher, them all. Supernova, and now the Totem Cuckoo's gone. Aegis into the hands of Jackie. They'll buy back on the Death Prophet. They'll look over at White Mine, who's really low, trying to get out of the fight, trying to survive, maneuver his way. But there are the axes. They'll get the Cone of the Crystal Maiden. They'll buy back on Cuckoo. They haven't lost anything just yet on the side of TNC, but Armel on the run. One more shot with the Spirit Siphon. Jackie's not attacking Armel. anything. Like, Jackie's a slug. He's slower than the Underlord. Doesn't have boots at the moment. Like, just jump. Like, he sees. Like, uh, he popped the BKB inside the pit. Uh, I think he could have swapped, like, either SNY or Power Treads in just to have a bit more move speed. Good Fisher. I want to see that fight again because I'm pretty sure he should be able to have any kind of vision to jump on something, anything. Yeah, just never really jumps here. Pit of Malice locks up Armel. He silenced Fissure's Echo Slam. He Echo Slammed. Pit. Okay, so that's why. I was like, yeah, he had time to actually use it, but uh, Echo Slam, great Fissure from Tims. Yeah, and on top of that, Underward, he gets the Ag's uh, Blessing, picks that up. 11,000 gold here, and just pop using that Exorcism, trying to push in 9k lead for T1. TNC, they've got Armel with buyback ready. 
The question is, is he going to end up using it or hold it? Do they just concede at least the tier three, maybe a set of racks, wait for the exorcism to end? They've got the fissure, the totem, that's Oh, my two. finest creation, says Ice Frog. <laughs> You don't even have to stand on the fissure. Like, that's the most beautiful part. Like, you can just stand wherever they get near the fissure. Octarine Core, Timeless Relic, pretty much. Uh, Always available. Yeah. And he is level 25. Jackie going in. Lotus Orb and two right clicks from Jackie to blow up Fabi. He's got my back too. Fissure comes in. That hits some of the Phantom Assassin as well as the Underworld. They're thinking about it now, but still holding on to the Puck Spy. So they don't have Dream Core to work with. They don't have this Puck. They only have three heroes here. The lockdown, though, everybody was up, could have led to something more. They have to be careful about the uh, Earthshaker. Has that timeless relic, so 25% debuff duration, longer stuns. And he hit level 25, so minus 1.5 seconds on Enchant Totem, which brings it down to 2.6. Oh, KP, he's out far. Jackie spots him. They're dark rifting in, and that's why they get a, well, they get a kill onto the Beastmaster. Down again, has buyback. Everybody but the Jugs got it. You can actually use Fisher, Totem, Echo Slam, Totem, Fisher, into Totem again. So you can lock them down for a very, very long time. Jeez. Lincoln's for Cuckoo. 13,000 Golden Phantom Assassin. Junko comes out as well as the Fisher that's going to land on the Death Prophet as well as the Phantom Assassin. Wind Waker, you can see that Cyclone bringing him back. Primal War is used, as well as the Omni Slash bouncing around. It's only hitting onto the Underworld. Now goes back over to Cuckoo. They get the kill out of this Death Prophet. Blade Fury right on top of Jackie with the BKBB pop. He's trying to get the damage out, but the Fisher hits on a three of these skills as well. He's stunning the whole team. They got the stun on the entire side of T1. They don't have buybacks available on the Crystal Maiden or the Death Prophet. They get the kill onto the Underworld. Two set that's three got to the side of T1. Jackie trying to fight his way through this. Dark Rift in. Jackie trying to survive. Now he's going to run. Lincoln's pop. Float Absorb on him. Blade Fury as well. Another Jackie, Fisher. Cycloned up into the air. They get the Kona Zephyr, they'll take out Jackie. He's gone, drops the Divine Rapier. That gets picked up. Carl well back, he Dark Rift in. Oh, you're not getting anywhere. Away. And he is stunned up, killed off. See you later, and gone you are. As you bought All right, I'm this, calling it right now. Earthshaker shard upgrade is the most broken thing in Dota right now. Man, the amount of work that the Tim's did with that Timeless Relic, level 25 talent, he's just... Stunning the whole team on the Fisher. Like, Watch. it's actually insane. Totem, Ami bounces back over to the Underworld. Somehow, from another such Fisher a is available, then he uses a Totem, stuns everyone. <laughs> totem again. And then Echo. Like, it just doesn't stop. Fisher again. <laughs> <laughs> totem. Oh my god. Like, Fisher duration is 8 seconds, 9.8 uh, second cooldown. It's just insane. Like, you have less than 2 seconds downtime on the Fisher, and you can keep stunning people. Jug picks up the Divine Rapier. I will say, though, he's got the Divine Rapier, but we are at 60 minutes. And like we said, net worth it doesn't matter. So it just P matters who's alive. Yeah, PA has enough money to buy another Divine Rapier. I'll be back to Let's check the buybacks. So... Only two buybacks available, Puck and the Earthshaker. So, yeah, I mean, if they just go mid, it's a possibility. Like, whoever loses the next game, uh, loses the fight, loses the game pretty much. I think the, the big issue, no buyback for three heroes. Can they, can they defend long enough? It's a couple of crits off of some stifling daggers, and yeah, maybe. But down, no Underward for 90, no Death Prophet for 50. Yeah, we're at the 60 minute mark, but I don't know if this is gonna matter. Finally, Adesso. Adesso Divine. He's going all in. I mean, you have to. Yeah. Rolling Thunder. Ooh, Armel trying to come in. Roll up. Now the right click's coming through. They've got the Dream He Coil almost one-shot Tims. And now looking to get the rest. They've got the Fissure. Here comes the Tims Joe. They've got the Totem. They've got the Echo. They have the Fissures. They've got the damage. And they get the kill. The Jackie will take him out. And he'll drop another Divine Rapier into the hands of TNC. Just like that. It looked like T1 had it. But off the back of Tims and the very fair and balanced Shard of Earthshaker. 
TNC. Yeah, you also on. have a true strike on the Enchant Totem. Don't forget that. So you always land a hit on the Phantom Assassin. There's like seven, yeah. eight hundred damage coming out from that spell. Yeah, Earthshaker. Uh, thank you, Ice Frog. But <laughs> uh, yeah, most of the time, I think um, whenever Earthshaker is actually picked, uh, it's a must uh, pick up shard for him because yeah. it's too much value. And the, combined with the, the tier four neutral items, timeless relic. I mean, the, the pen 